What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to the recap. Ladies and gentlemen, we are completely spoiled with great basketball this whole week, bro. Just nothing but banger after banger after banger, and the first day of playoffs are wrapped, and every single one of these games were interesting in their own way. I'm going to give it a buck. It's the first day of the playoffs. We're here to overreact to some extent. Don't come back and be clipping me about stuff I said here if the team I said looked bad in game one going to win a series. It's not really relevant. <laughs> we just gonna talk about what we saw today, all right? Be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you are new. Um, I, I I'm recording this before the Portland Trailblazers have officially secured their win. I'm a ge I'm just guessing that this is the end. Um, they are by 11 with about a minute and a half to go. Uh, Tr Trace McGrady is not gonna go into Michael Porter Jr.'s body to make anything happen. So I'm just assuming Portland got that win, go win for them. I'm gonna take it from the very beginning though. Like I said, we're gonna be reacting. Like, you you know what I'm saying? People get so upset. People get so upset when you pick against their team. And listen, y'all know I don't like doing predictions around here. I just do it because it's part of the game. Everybody wants to hear who you think is going to win. I would much rather just talk about the games in front of me. But if I pick yada yada and six, yada yada and seven, the opposing fan base is coming at me heavily. If the team win, bro, I don't care. <laughs> I don't I don't root for anybody but the Bulls. And kind of Phoenix tomorrow. I'm gonna keep it, you know, I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna keep it honest with you. Kind of Phoenix tomorrow. But if the Bulls aren't related, just know I'm I'm neutral. I give a prediction. I'm not one of those people that need to be right. If I pick a team getting winning four, but they get swept in four, I'm not like, oh, I was wrong. It does not matter. You know what I'm saying? I like, okay, let's get to the first game of the day. It was the Bucks versus the Heat, one of the hardest series to predict. And you saw why in this game right here. This is ugly. This was grinded. This reminded me of like early 2000s basketball. And I'm here for it. This is one of the weirdest ways I've watched a basketball game. Now I'm a family man at heart. Kind of, um, little bro had a, ba a baseball game, so I'm outside in 90 degree weather with this phone that keeps overheating, and I'm trying to watch the game while also watching to see when he's up to bat and what he's doing. He hit <laughs> off off topic. He hit a ball. Um, uh, little brother's 13 years old, if I'm not maybe 12. I don't know. He's six two. He hit a ball that if they had a fence around. The field would have been a no-doubt home run, but instead it was a ground rule double. So shout-out to Nolan. Big game for him. Big hit. Uh, let's talk about this game, though. This was one of the most bizarre games um, imaginable. If you look at the statistics, you see, oh, snap, one team shot 40% from three on uh, 50 attempts. You would just assume they would win the game. And actually, I saw a statistic that said, like, a team that has outperformed another team from three at this significance were 73-1. and one. And now it's 73-2 and two because the Heat ended up losing this game with this much of a boost. They, they made 23s while the Bucs made 5 for 31. That is insane that the Bucs were able to get this win. And like, like I said, we're here to react, yada, yada, yada. Jimmy Butler had a dreadful game. He hit, the, he hit the one shot to put them up to go. I'm not put them up, but put them into overtime, which is great. But other than that, he was – he attempted nine threes. And I'm watching this game, and once it completely wrapped, I'm like, you know what? Uh, shout out to the homies that saw me at the nail salon because we did – we did that as well today. Um, I looked at the statistics. I'm like, this is this is not a Jimmy Butler type game. Attempting nine threes is not something Jimmy Butler does, right? That was a season high for this year, and it's tied for the most threes he's attempted in the last three years. And he did it in the game one of the playoffs, and that is a testament to how good of a defensive performance it was collectively from the Milwaukee Bucks because Dante DiVincenzo did great on Jimmy Butler. Um, P.J. Tucker did great on Jimmy Butler. And I know Drew Holiday didn't have a lot of time on Jimmy Butler, but Drew Holiday in general is the X factor for this series. And you saw that today, him turning up, and was it the third quarter or was it the fourth? Turning up in one of these quarters and then also playing amazing defense and actually getting the block to save the game in overtime. Drew Holiday was amazing. This game was filled with type fouls or falls. I feel like everybody ended up on the floor for 10 plus seconds. Chris Middleton, Jimmy Butler was face down on the hardwood for like a minute. Giannis hurt his elbow and had to get a shooting so like it was so it was so much banging of the bodies in this game and like I said it reminded me of throwback ball and it was it was incredible if, if I'm a Heat fan I'm not tripping too much because Jimmy Butler had like his worst game ever and Bam Adebayo had one of his worst games ever and you know what I, I hate to say this but my boy Bam looked timid as ever timid as ever if you look at his statistics throughout his career of how much he's been getting better and better with his jump shot throughout his career you would think that this man is just like you know he's he's destined to be an amazing mid-range shooter and this year he was good 
But in this game, it was like he wasn't even looking at the basket. Now, he finished with 15 shot attempts, so I promise you, he could have at least got 23, 24 shot attempts off. And some of the little bunnies, some of the little bunnies he could have got. So I'm not tripping too much if I'm the Heat. Yes, you might have wasted one of um, Duncan Robinson's amazing shooting performances. You might have wasted one of Dragic's great performances. But I, I'm a big person that I believe in the hot hand. I believe in people getting hot and streaking at the right time. And going into the playoffs, Goran Dragic has been amazing in the last 10 or so games going into the playoffs. So I'm just assuming he's going to continue to be great. You know what I'm saying? So maybe he, have an, he has another game to this type of um, productivity. But this is, a, this is a tough one to lose considering you played amazing defense. The team that you were going against shot bad from three, and you still ended up losing. Shout out to Giannis. Um, so I have to, no, 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 no. There are so many moments here. And this game happened at 1 o'clock almost 12 hours ago. So there are moments in the game that are not fresh in my mind. But one that is, is Tough Juice slash Karam Butler playing the clock and getting the 10-second violation on Giannis. Wow. Listen, Giannis needs every single one of those seconds to even come close to making free throws. And he's lucky that they ended up with this win because he had so many opportunities to put the dagger, to put them up by this and that. And I know he's not a good three a free throw shooter. He even had a graphic that popped up in this game that was like, um, he's third worst of all time in the playoffs at free throw percentage. And I was thinking about that list. And I, Shaq has to be in there somewhere, number one, number two, as the worst worst. But I'm like, who is that other guy? I should go look that up. Um, other than that, the Bucks grinding this game out is big for them. Um, because in last year in the series, the real big momentum shifter for them is when Jimmy Butler got fouled and ended up winning the game. If Jimmy Butler would have won this game one, I'm not saying the series would have been wrapped, but I think it would have been a dramatic blow to the Milwaukee Bucks. But I think they're probably confident, and both teams should be confident right now, by the way. Look, this is the Bucs should be confident. Like, man, we shot 16% from three. We didn't get a good game from Giannis, but we still won. That's why they should be confident. The Heat should be confident as in, like, our best two players, all our all NBA, all defensive type players, both did terrible, and we only lost by two. So that's why this series is one of the best. Like, I cannot wait for game two. If this goes five, which I'm assuming it will, I, I would guess this is going seven. I want to pull up to Milwaukee for a playoff game, man. They're the closest team to me. My Bulls ain't been there in a long time. It's an hour drive for me. I need to pull up to Milwaukee because seeing fans in the crowd today was amazing. It was a little jarring at first. I'm going to keep it a buck to see fans in there, and some of them being unmasked was a little bit jarring. But I have to remember, it's just a step in the right direction for, for everybody that threw the, the vaccine and the COVID cases going down, we're getting to some type of normalcy. Um, and seeing that in basketball is great because, I, man, the Brooklyn Nets game, let's just go there. I know there was a game in between, but let me quickly spend a couple minutes on the Brooklyn Nets game because this is the least entertaining out of the group. They just kept panning the audience, and I'm seeing whole sections unmasked. And I know that some places have, like, a vaccinated section, which is a great idea where you could be unmasked, you could yada, yada, mingle and all of that. It felt like, it felt like New York slash Brooklyn was just wilding out there, which, again, is good. And, and sometimes I, I think I could see it being bad. But, hey, as long as people got their doses, let it be. I, you, I am vaccinated. But when I go to this Milwaukee Bucks game, I will keep my mask on. Just just an extra, extra layer of safety. Extra layer of safety. Um, quickly talking about this game, Robert Williams was amazing. Um, and, and you know what? It's going to take a lot for the Boston Celtics to win one game to, to make this a real series. But there are some bright things that you saw, and a lot of it is Robert Williams um, almost tying the all-time blocks record in, in a uh, playoff game. He was on triple-double alert, too. Big games from him. But obviously, the big thing is that Jabari Parker had to play 21 minutes because they don't really have bodies. Um, and uh, the Brooklyn Nets, Steve Nash is like, I see Jabari Parker. I'm going at Jabari Parker. And everybody did. It was James. It was Reed. It was it was KD. It was all of them. They saw Jabari Parker, and they, they was like feasting on him. And then Jason Tatum really struggled this game. I don't expect him to shoot 30% every game um, this series. But it is a lot tougher for him to get his shots off because they're letting Marcus Smart shoot. Marcus Smart had a good game statistically, but that's because they were letting him do the things he was doing. Kevin Walker had an off game as well. And it's just too much firepower for uh, the Brooklyn Nets. They didn't even – none of their guys had, like, significantly great games. And they just breezed through this. You know, for a moment, like, Boston was keeping into it, but that third quarter hit – and Brooklyn's like, you know what? Let's play basketball. I didn't even realize Blake didn't attempt a shot. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, let's just play basketball. And that's, like I said, that was the least exciting game of the bunch. Let's go back. Clips going to clip.
y'all know I'm, I'm not one of those Clippers haters out here. I don't care if they're successful or not. But I'm going to say that last six minutes, you know what? I even found the statistic about the last six minutes. Hold on. Let me go to my photos because we screenshotted it. Um, it, it was not good. Here we go. The last six minutes and seven seconds for the Clippers, they were two for 12 from the floor, 0 for 7 from three, two for six from the line. This is one of the greatest free throw shooting teams in the league. Two for six from the line, a turnover, and got outscored 18 to 5. Shout out to my guy on Twitter for sending me those statistics um, because, wow, that's insane. For, for a lot of this game, listen, it was a it was very Dallas Mavericks um, for the win. But there are moments in this game where the Clippers are right there, you know, in the last six minutes. Of course, getting outscored 18-5 to five to end the game is not great. <laughs> Simple. Paul George came out bad and Pandemic P was, all, it was trending in like a quarter. In a quarter. He's like one of the most hated players in the NBA, which is so sad because I, I think Paul George is a cool dude. I think he's one of the smoothest players in the NBA, too. Then in the second half, he comes out, he scores the first couple buckets for the team, and he started to turn it around. You know, it's easy for a player to have a bad first half and then follow that up with a bad second half. So shout out to PG for coming out there and playing a little bit better. But then again, it didn't matter because in the last six minutes, they couldn't do a thing. This is a team that had a, a, a crazy great offense, crazy great three-point shooting for the entire regular season. And none of that showed today. And maybe that's one of the reasons why the Clippers, like, we chilling, bro. We had a great three-point shooting team all day, all season. Marcus Morris was literally top three in three-point percentage. He was 0 for 6 on the day. He probably not going 0 for 6 again. So the Clippers fans are probably chilling. But, bro, this is a game you should probably win. It's a series you should win convincingly, if you ask me. I think that you have the more talent between the Dallas Mavericks and you. But the Dallas Mavericks play better. It play, they play harder in the grand scheme of things. Reggie Jackson was just out there running. <laughs> Don't disrespect the Reggie though. He do, he does look cool with the goggles and everything. But like he was just out there kind of running. Terrence Mann should probably get a little bit more burn in game number two. But it's all about playing game number one and adjusting for two and adjusting for three. It's the playoffs, man. It's a long series. I'm expecting every single one of the teams that play today to look a little bit differently in game two because they see what's working, they see what's not, and they're going to try to adjust accordingly. For the Dallas Mavericks, one of the main things for the Dallas Mavericks, first of all, Luca. I don't have to explain to you the greatness of Luka. He didn't have to score in the fourth quarter for them to get this win, which is which is great. Oh, my. I can't believe that this man is only 22 years old. We're going to be blessed to watch this man play in the playoffs, hopefully every year, for the next 15, 10, 15 years, bro. He's that, he's that much of a gem. I love the players that, of course, are great regular season players, but can back that up with great postseason play. And Luka has done that. Seven postseason games. Four, three triple doubles. And I know the triple double statistic ain't as popular as it used to be, but he went through this stretch, and I don't I don't remember if it was late second quarter or early third quarter. He was doing everything he wanted. He was doing everything. He didn't care who was defending him. It was it was I mean it was it was Kawhi, it was PG, it was Marcus, it was the switch of Patrick Beverly. It did not matter. This man was doing it all, and it's just beautiful. But even with Luca doing that. Sometimes he can't win those games because of the others, right? This is why I think the Clippers will probably win this series because they're less reliant on the others than the Dallas Mavericks. But today, the others looked amazing. Like, Chris Desperzig is supposed to be their second star. He didn't do that today. This man is a size of a tree trunk and just won't get into the post. And I know that's not his game. I know that's not his game. But I just want to see occasionally, and I have the same thing about Laurie Marketing. occasionally, when you got the smaller defender on, on you, Please just post up. So it's a few times, and I know it's not your game, but if the guy guarding you is a whole foot shorter, I think you'll be okay even if you don't practice those shots. And, yeah, uh, he didn't have, and he started off cool, and then he just was terrible for the last three quarters. Offensively, defensively, sure, whatever. But Doran Finney-Smith, amazing. I don't know if I can rely on Doran Finney-Smith to shoot four for five and three every night, but he's shown year after year after year that he's a competent three-point shooter. Tim Hardaway Jr., same thing I said with, um, with Goran Dragic. I love a player that is hot going into the playoffs. Tim Hardaway Jr. was hot going into the playoffs, and Jalen Brunson back-to-back -back and once. Bad to get a paycheck. Josh Richardson wasn't amazing in this game, but you don't need him to be a star -er. You know what I'm saying? And his 17 minutes, he was competent enough to help your team win. This is a beautiful win for the Dallas Mavericks. They're not afraid of the Clippers. They may know that they don't have the talent to match the Clippers, but they are not afraid of the Clippers. And that's going to make this series probably longer than what it should be. Now, if the Clippers, <laughs> hey, if the Clippers don't win this series after finagling and losing to OKC to end the year, I'm not even going to speak on it.
you better win this series. For everything you did to get this series, you you better win this series. And lastly, the last game of the day, the Portland Trailblazers get a win. It is official now. I started this video 15 minutes ago, and it has officially wrapped up. And the final score ended up being 123-109. to 109. Um, I love to see Jokic go out there and be super aggressive because they're going to need that, man. People always want to point to the Jamal Murray injury, and, of course, that is the biggest injury of them all. But they are missing so many more. They're missing, they're missing so many. P.J. Dozier, rotational player, Will Barton, rotational player, all out with injury today. And, of course, Jamal Murray. That's three guard slash wing players that you need in the playoff series. So to see Jokic go out there and try to do everything in his power to, uh, to, to lead his team to victory, I mean, the man didn't pass the ball to get assists today. I mean, of course, he was a playmaker still. Um, but he saw the mismatches, man. As, as solid as Yusuf Nurkic can be, he is somewhat of a shell of his former self. He had a good game today. I'm not saying that he's bad. I'm just saying, like, before he snapped his leg, he was on a trajectory. Like, oh, snap, we, Yusuf Nurkic might actually be that guy. He might be that good. And, of course, he's still solid. He just ain't at that level no more. So, Jokic saw that. And then he saw the Enos Cancer minutes. And that was about as easy as it gets as well. And he tried to take advantage. Michael Porter Jr. is one of those players. He might shoot you out of a game sometime. And he was one for 10 from three, um, it, which is crazy because when I was watching, at one point he was like 11 for 14 or something. He's being very efficient. So I'm guessing in these last couple minutes of the game, he's just trying to get them back into about shooting three, shooting three, shooting threes. But this is something that I said before this series even started. If I'm the Portland Trailblazers, I'm just guarding, I'm double teaming Jokic. First of all, they didn't do that at all today. And they still got a win, which is Great. Double team of Jokic, not doubling off Michael Porter Jr. Hey, Compazzo, I know you're a good three-point. You're an okay three-point shooter. I'm letting you shoot. I'm letting Austin Rivers shoot. I'm letting Aaron Gordon shoot. I, Monte Morris, you probably don't want to let him shoot. But like everybody else on the team, I'm letting you shoot the ball, and I'm going to double these two star players because I don't trust anybody else to do these things. The Denver Nuggets are playing a two-way player 20 minutes a game. <laughs> it's unfortunate, bro, because if Jamal Murray and if they were a fully healthy team, I don't know if there's a ceiling on this team. I, like, I legitimately think that they could win the championship if they were fully healthy, but unfortunately they are not. And because of that, a team that is fully healthy, like the Portland Trailblazers, can take advantage of those things. Damian Lillard did not start off well. Compazzo was, you know, out there. And then Dame turned it up. Yep, it don't take much. It don't, it don't really take much to get Dame. Dame sees two in a row go down. You might as well call it quits. The fans came out booing Carmelo Anthony. And, you know, I understand having a distaste for a player that left your team on ugly terms. I like it was it was a it was a, but my my thing is it was a decade ago. You know what I'm saying? I, I haven't been in many, many romantic relationships in my life, but I couldn't imagine if me and my current girlfriend broke up and I'm 34 years old and I'm still like, ooh, that ooh, her right there. I hate boo. I, I can't imagine that. Like, I'm not saying you have to root for Carmelo Anthony by any means. He's on the opposing team. It's okay. But like every time he he touched the ball, it was heavy boos. I'm not here to tell you how to be a fan, but I'm just saying for me personally, I wouldn't do such a thing. Um, and he, well, he played. <laughs> he played well. I mean, had the man had, what, nine in, nine in a row at one point early in that, oh, late in that first quarter, he was hooping. And part of that's because y'all wanted the boo. Anthony Simons is, is amazing. Anthony Simons was not a guy that was drafted to be a, a three-point specialist, but he adapted to the time. I want playing time, so I need to, I need to find a way to play. So I'm gonna shoot this I'm gonna shoot this pill. And he shot four for five from three. Um, it was a good win for them. Robert Covington was amazing defensively, and like I said, Yusuf Nurkic didn't have a bad game by any means. Um, but and they end up getting the win. They end up getting the win, which is which is crucial. They gained one win on the road. Now they are I'm not saying they're the favorite, but the tides have turned to home court advantage for them is what I'm trying to say. And overall, we just got a good day of basketball, which is amazing. Um, um Michael Michael Malone. Has to make some type of adjustments, and I know he don't have that much wiggle room with the talent that he has on his roster, but he has to make some type of wiggle room to help with the Damian Lillard thing. But then again, it's Damian Lillard. I feel like you could throw 100 different coverages at Damian Lillard. It wouldn't matter because he's Damian Lillard, you know? So great games all around. I don't know if day number two is going to live up to it, but if it does, oh, my God, we are so spoiled. So day number two starts off with the 76ers and the Wizards. That could be a good game, but I just think that the 76ers are too good defensively for, for, um, for the Wizards to – Make that much of a noise in this series. Then you get that second game. Whoo. Hey, that second game. Suns-Lakers. Hey, like I said, I, I would love to see the Phoenix Suns wins because I'm, I'm the biggest Chris Paul fan out there. And, again, I love to see Chris Paul be successful. But that also doesn't mean I'm rooting against the Lakers. I know this is a weird thing, yada, yada, yada. I can't wait for this game. The 4-5 in the East is going to be amazing. And I, I don't know. I, I think that the Grizzlies can hang a little bit with the Jazz. 
That'll probably be a 30-point win. Mark my words. It'll probably be a 30-point win. But, hey, day number two hopefully lives up to day number one. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like, man. What are some of the things you saw in today's uh, slate of games that you thought were interesting? It was just me talking for 20 minutes, which didn't feel like 20. Maybe it did to you. All right, I'll see you all tomorrow. Peace.